This week's project is a vintage, possibly an antique, shine box. Um, it looks primitive, in other words, handmade to me. Um, it's very dirty, soiled, it's rusty, it has a lot of old wax on it, and yeah, it's pretty dirty on the inside. Kind of dusty, very, very dusty. So I'll have to clean that out. Um, at first I thought that this was put on incorrectly, but when I think about it, that could be the way they wanted it because when it falls down, it automatically keeps it closed. Whereas if it was actually in the correct line, um, it may not stay closed. So, yep, it has some loose nails on it, very dirty. We will take the nails out. I'm gonna take it all apart. First, I'll wash it with some soap and water and get it clean enough to handle. Then I will use my wax wash, and I believe I'll take it apart first. I'll take it apart, use the wax wash, get that as clean as I can with a wax wash because I think it will remove some of this polish. It's not going to remove all of the polish, I know. I just don't have high hopes for that. And I might use, I don't know, a little denatured alcohol or some paint thinner to try to get that clean. And last but not least, if I can, if it looks like it might help, I will do some bleaching. I'll use some oxalic acid on it. That's my plan. I am not going to make it perfect. I'm going to restore it. So, you know, I'll clean it up. I will remove as much rust as I can and get it looking neat and clean. And it still functions okay. It did come with these implements, these brushes and bits of wax and things like that. I don't know how old that is. So, um, yeah. I don't know if we know anything about that. Boot Polish Esquire. It comes with this little thing. It contains lanolin. This looks like an old one right here. I'll have to I'll have to look that up. I'll have to look for it. Mm, it looks like someplace in Georgia. Leave a comment if you know anything about it. These brushes are obviously old, but we'll do the same. We'll um soak them and try to get them cleaned up and see how we can do and put it back together again. Okay, let's get going. So here it's dried all night, and like I said before, I'm going to get the uh, wax wash and go over it with that. I'm also going to try to save these shoe shine tools, and I'll give them a really good soaking with my industrial strength Zep. Let's take it apart. So this has nails in it to hold the shoe form on, and I'm going to try to pry it off. It looks like it's a bit loose right here anyway, so that will help. I'll use my 5-in-1. Yep, that's what I needed to do, was put it on the vise. Um, it does have some nails in here. And I need to pull these out.
like the alternates, do you know? Do you know if they... I would not be able to... So I could put some oxalic acid on these, but here's why I'm not going to do it. I, um, I sanded them with a, an orbital sander, and that's only because I, I had to take precautions for lead. Um, it had some kind of red paint on it, which if I had done the lead test would have probably given me least of all a false positive so I just assumed it was lead um, and I took the precautions but you know I had the full coverage and everything and my sander hooked up to a shop vac um, and then I wiped these down now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to see if I can't fill some of these cracks I was able to conserve some of the writing I have no idea what it says but there's a few numbers on there uh, that's another reason why I don't want to use the oxalic acid. I want to, you know, preserve that if I can. And there are some saw marks. So I removed most of it and you can't, you know, you can barely feel it. But I do want to save those because it was part of the whole process. All of this being made, you know, by hand. Okay, 
So I'm going to fix some of these cracks. So yeah, I'm just filling these cracks. And this crack goes all the way through. That's why I can clamp it. If you can see that. I'm just going to wipe this off a little bit. Two to keep it nice and flat. And you can see how that's coming together nicely. So I'll pop one in the middle here. Or actually on the side. Sure, if that will be effective. There we go. Yeah, let's fix some of these other um, cracks with the glue and the sawdust, and we'll see how that goes. We'll get glue in there. chunk out of there that I'm going to remove. Well, at least it's not like the Norfolk County Superior Courthouse that was so hot that the judge threatened to turn off the air conditioning so witnesses didn't speak up. So this morning, oh, let me put this down. This morning, uh, after I sand these, uh, this is the foot mold support. It sits like this on top of the uh, little box. And it had had a million nails in it and I filled the nail holes. Um, and though I know it would be more restorative to put all the nails back, I think I won't do that. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a few holes and I'm I found a really tiny dowel. And so I'm going to do, I don't know, probably um, three or four holes for this dowel. I want to say it's about one eighth of an inch and let me show you. So it's about, you know, very tiny dowel. It's actually a little, um, like a cooking stick where you would, um, I think that's what it is. I don't know where I got it, but I, I saved it for something like this. Now, where this is so small, I don't want to be drilling huge holes in it because it, it has a very thin profile. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this thin, thin dowel. And yeah, so let me sand that first. I'll do that off camera and then I'll show you how I'm going to secure it with dowels. Okay, if I had chalk, I would use it because uh, it would be much easier to just wipe it off. Um, but I am going to have to use a pencil. Um, so I'm going to make two tiny registration marks just to make sure that I'm... I'm just marking the top corner of where 
where this is going to go. And I'll I'll gently sand that off when I'm when I'm done. And this is the bottom. All right, so I have the four marks, and so I'm going to start off by drilling a hole in my form, and I'm starting off a little smaller bit here. So I'm going to try to use a place that doesn't have an original nail hole. Just it doesn't just doesn't fit my my scheme of doing things here so i'm going to go let's say let's make a couple of little marks let's put this down here and just say um they're going to be kind of close together but still on the inside so we'll do we'll do make them even actually so sometimes if i want to get a good grip on drilling I'm actually going to press it onto my mark and I'm going to push it into the backwards position and I'm just going to make a little mark then I'll put it back into righty tighty. I'll do the same thing on this side. I'm going to go back into um, and uh, let's see as if I was going to unscrew something. I'm going to make a little mark put it into the righty tighty. Let's mark it uh, with how deep I actually want it. So let's see. We decided it was this one. And, oh, I guess I'd go, hold on. So let's figure that I someday somebody's going to want to remove them again. So we'll say, oh, it doesn't need to go that deep. It's gonna go like a, something like this I think is good. I guess that's about half an inch. Okay. That was a lot of work for just making those holes, but it's actually worth it because you know it just makes life easier i had to cut these on my on my vice out back i'm just going to smooth off the sides a little and so what i'm going to do is just to make sure that i'm in the right place i'm going to loosely place these and get centered here all right, here we go. And I'll remove these. so that I'm not beating on it. Yeah, that's good, I like it. That's so much better than putting a million nails in it. So I'm going to coat all of these with some uh, shellac. So I wanna seal in any residual lead paint.
Okay, so I think I've figured this out. It's loosely taped. I don't want to move it around too much. Um, and I just wanted to say that um, I did flip some of these upside down and turn them around because um, I want to use new spots for when I put the um, hinges back on and do the nailing. And I wanted a nice fresh top to put the shoe mold back down on. So, I don't know. I mean, I could be doing it wrong. You can tell me what you think. Um, but I thought that would give it a fresh look, um, even though it's <laughs> maybe not purely restoration. I don't know. Let me think about that because um, my thought is when I start drilling into these putty spots, are they just going to obliterate with, you know, the filling that I did? Okay, so I carefully flipped it upside down. And as I said earlier, this is actually the old top. Um, and that's as good as I got it. So I'm going to use that for the bottom. And so what I'm going to do is use a little bit of wood glue. And I have my my fresh nails. So they look a little shiny because they have oil on them. I did the rust removal. And in here, that's usually what I do is I put put a little bit of oil on uh, my hardware, if it's especially if it's going to sit for a little bit. Um, but as a, a little bit of a treatment, <clears throat> it's a very friendly oil. It's actually olive oil. <laughs> so it's just an old bottle of olive oil. So, yeah, let's see. I'm going to turn this uh, right side up here. Let me just make sure that that's the side that I want. Actually, I think I'll do this side and I'll leave this on the inside. So I am going to put this dowel in at about a 60 degree angle because it will make it more easy to keep it on if it's at an angle. If it's completely vertical to the top of the box, it will more likely pop right out when someone is manipulating it. But my thought is that if I put the dowel in at an angle, it will be more secure. So I have my shellac in here, and I'm going to use a little bit of natural umber just to tint my shellac.
but the LA Superior Court recently moved everything over to digital files. So the courts can't run well it just digital uh, reporting. Well, you can't run court for digital reporting if the system that runs the reporting is full so down. You can't pull up files if they're down. You can't transport people to and from custody to the courts they're supposed to go into. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. I don't know when it will be back up, but I am keeping an eye on it, and I am also very thankful. Hi, thank you for watching this week's video. Uh, this week I worked on a restoration of a an old shoe shine box and I'll post right here. Um, uh, what I did was a, just a little internet search to see if I could find any old shoe shine boxes that were similar and I did. I found a few so the prices range from all over. This one was in pretty poor condition. Um, it appears to be handmade and um, it was very stained, very um, broken, and yeah. So what I did was I um, took it all apart. I tried to fix as much as I could uh, without totally changing the whole dynamic of it. Um, so it's a mild restoration, and I say mild, um, it was about seven hours worth of work um, to get it to this point, probably even more, probably closer to eight hours. Um, I did leave the latch, um, but I made it horizontally, you know, straight. So, uh, uh, vertically rather. I made a dowel. I didn't make a dowel, but I used a dowel to attach the shoe form. Um, and I used doweling to attach the shoe form to the support underneath, um, small dowels. And um, I did a fair amount of coloring on this. I used the shellac with a little bit of um, um, raw umber dye, I'm sorry, burnt umber dye. And um, I did some walrus oil on it. I also did some regular wax and I did some black wax and I did just a little bit of shading around the edge, um, just a little bit. So yeah, um, it works okay. Uh, the top works really well. I did load it up with some um, parts here. I did over the brushes off camera. These brushes are in pretty poor condition, but they're very worn out. But um, I just sanded it down and um, I stained it and oiled it. So yeah, there's that, there's this one. And then I did over the little boxes of wax. So there's nothing in them. All I did was paint the inside. And this one's a little, I have to wax this around the edge so, so that I can get the top off. Um, I did put a little piece of paper inside because everything's not perfectly dry yet and this is a brand new rag. So I, I didn't want to get it soiled. But yeah, um, what I did too was I turned, instead of putting the box back in the same way that it came apart, I actually flipped some of it so that there would be less nail marks and less staining. And yeah, this crack I got back together, but as you can see, it's not perfect. I did have to fill these joints um, a couple with a couple of different products just to get it so that it looked okay, but it's in it's solid as far as stability 
yeah so um thank you for watching i hope you like it i'll show you a few close-up pictures and yeah if you're not subscribed would you consider subscribing and liking this video if you do and have a great rest of your weekend and i wish you all good and beautiful things